I was born a free man. Live with my family in New York. Be good for your mother. Until the day I was deceived. To Solomon. Kidnapped. Sold into slavery. Well, boy, how you feel now? My name is Solomon North. I'm a free man. And you have no right whatsoever to detain me. You're no free man. You're nothing but a Georgia runaway. Hi, I'm Lulu. I'm Arwan. And we're here from the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press, here with the screenwriter of 12 Years a Slave. Hi, I'm John Ridley. How are you? Uh, very good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So, the film focuses on a man whose freedom was given to him and then taken away. How did you capture this, never having experienced it yourself? Uh, I, I believe the way that I captured it was really through the memoir. This is the memoir of a man named Solomon Northup and he was born a free black man in upstate New York in the 1840s and in many parts of the country at that time period uh, people of color were not allowed to be free they did not have the same rights that all Americans have and really that everybody is born with uh, in reading that memoir it was so powerful and Solomon wrote with such clarity and emotion uh, nothing is easy but it was such a, a phenomenal guide for understanding what he was going through, how he lived his life, and also how he survived this ordeal without bitterness and hatred. And that was very important to me. So did you try and capture the kind of how he went through it without bitterness and hatred it throughout the movie? Absolutely. I tried to be as faithful to the source material as possible, not just the words on the page, but the emotion that Solomon wrote with. And I thought it was very important to show an individual who could survive and thrive and endure difficult circumstances, but come out of it without hating everyone who he thought may have um, perpetrated some of these crimes against him. And I think that's a very important message for all of us now, is that um, there may be some people who do bad things or wrong things, but not everybody is that way. And we have to pick and choose the people that we stand against and why we do it. But hatred, blanket hatred uh, against people because they're different, has never served us and never gotten us anywhere. I remember during the movie he said, um, I don't want to survive, I want to live, which was a really interesting quote to me. Um, Arman? Was there ever a time where you were overcome by the emotions of this story? Not during the writing process. Um, I thought the first time that I read the memoir that it was amazingly powerful and I know how it moved me. But when you're working on a film, there are some very fundamental things that you have to do with the script and you really can't give yourself over to emotion every single day. But I do remember the first time that I saw the film and particularly the first time I saw it with an audience and I was incredibly moved by what I saw in terms of the filmmaking and the performances and how this really amazing cast and crew were able to take this memoir, these, these words on the page and really give them life and that movement and that touched me as well as the way that people and audiences react, how they're moved, how they're touched, not just in America, around the world. This is really a story that has global impact, and that, every time I have the opportunity to see it, yes, it, it touches me, it moves me. Unlike the other movies in this panel, your film dates back to the 1800s. How did you use the script to tell time? Did you focus on the old English, the costumes, the set, or what did you mainly focus on? For me personally, I focus mostly on the language itself, since I am a writer. Um, there are other departments that would focus on the wardrobe or the production design, but it was very important to me for the language to sound accurate to that time period and also have a separation of language. Not everybody speaks the same way. That, that's true now in 2014, and it was certainly true in the early 1840s. Um, Solomon was a very well-educated man. Uh, he was very accepted in his community. Uh, I think a lot of people, when they think of slaves or slavery, think of people who are denied an education so they don't speak particularly well. Uh, and that wasn't true for all people of color. So I wanted to have uh, a use of language that showed uh, a socioeconomic divides as well as uh, geographical divides uh, because there's a lot of travel in this film from upstate New York all the way down to the Louisiana Bayou. So for me, using language really represented a time and a place uh, as well as represented who these individuals were 
uh, what their station was, and how they could interact with each other. So you tried to make Solomon speak differently than the other slaves, but how did you still make him, um, did the other slaves get along with him? Yeah, the, the thing with this story was that um, it showed the similarities with people and not the differences. So even though you have slaves from other parts of the world, uh, one thing that people have in common, all of us, is our desire for the right of self-determination. And when all of us sort of coalesce around a single desire, then we tend to get along. You know, if we think about our families or our children and really what's best for them, what's best for our environment, what's best for the planet, uh, what's best for people to survive, that's when we as people tend to do our best. Uh, because it's not about the individual, it's about something else. And that was certainly the case with Solomon, is that even though these individuals were from different parts of the world, what they wanted was to be free. What they wanted was to be with their families or return to their families or to be able to do whatever it was they wanted. And in that case, they tended to get along because their goals were common. Thank you. The Wolf of Wall Street has sold twice as many tickets as 12 Years a Slave. Both tell real stories. Why do you think it is more popular? Well, I, to be honest, I can't speak to the mindset of why folks would buy one ticket over the other. I can say this, um, there's never been a film that has dealt with the peculiar institution of American slavery that has been so well received, both in terms of the critical response and in terms of audiences going out to see it. So I'm, whatever happens with another film, whether it's Wolf of Wall Street, whether it's Gravity, you know, people are going to go see the films that they're going to go see. Um, we can only think about what we're doing, the story we're telling, and I can't say how how thankful and I'm appreciative I am that people have chosen this film. Remember, most people never heard of this memoir before. Most people did not even know it existed. Most people did not know who Solomon was. Now there are people, even if they didn't see the film, they know who he is, they know the circumstance, they know the story. And our film has been out since October of 2013 and it's still in theaters and still doing well. And I really believe that in five years or 10 years, and I hope one day you, know, you take your children to see it or download it or do whatever you do with film 25 years from now. But I believe it's that kind of a story that is going to last a long time. So with all respect to these other amazing and wonderful films that are out right now, uh, I don't feel that we're in a dollar competition with them. I feel like we are here to, to tell a story that could and should endure. And actually, it's getting a wonderful reputation. Both critics and fans say must go to it. I, I, um, I hope they choose to. I really do. So you are a storyteller. What are some stories that your parents and their parents told you that inspired you to want to tell stories? Uh, my parents were very into education and reading. Uh, one thing I really appreciate about my parents was they were more interested in me reading than reading one particular kind of thing. So if I was reading, whether it was a newspaper, whether it was a comic book, whether it was a uh, sort of a, a pulp fiction type novel, or whether it was real true literature, as long as I was reading, they would, they would get me anything. They would get me any book and provide me with anything. And I think that's really important. Sometimes we look at young people and say, oh, you got to read this, you got to read that, as opposed to saying, look, if you're interested in that, Let's encourage you to do this. Uh, I think that's very important, and I'm very fortunate that my parents were open to all kinds of storytelling, and not just one kind of storytelling. We're in seventh grade. Do you have a particular book you'd want to suggest to us? Wow, I don't know. If you're in seventh grade and you've already seen 12 Years a Slave, then I'd say there's almost nothing that you couldn't see or read at this point. Um, I can't think of any one particular book. There's some that I like, but, um, well, there are many that I like, but, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know. I, I would, the one thing I would say is that I hope everybody, even if they don't see 12 Years a Slave, uh, read Solomon's memoir. It's an amazing document. It's so well written. Um, it's filled with such beauty and beautiful moments and history. Um, I, I would hope that everybody, even if they choose not to see the film, would pick up this book and read that. After you read the memoir, um, how long did it take you to compose the script? It was a long process. It was about uh, probably about three years altogether of writing and rewriting and just staying with it. But 
uh, I always thought it was it was it was worth the effort. It, it, it's such a beautiful book. It was really worth the effort. Did you try and use a lot of the um, Solomon's memoir in your script, or did you kind of uh, use a little bit of a poetic license for that? No, I tried not to use any license. I, I thought that the memoir was so beautifully written and true. And it's a true story. And when things are true, you don't have to change much. You don't have to add a lot of things. So my desire, and your, to your earlier question about how was I able to write something that existed 160 years ago, was not to create things, because I didn't know about the circumstances. I didn't know about life back then. So it was better for me as a writer to merely be honest with what was what the material that was offered uh, and stay true to that and not try to create things because I thought I had a better idea about that time period. Thank you, that's really interesting. Um, Armand? Our school's theme comes from Walt Whitman. It is this power of story, what's your verse? What are some things that you do that makes your verses unique? I, I, the only thing that I would say that I try to do is just try to be myself as much as possible. I've been very fortunate and to have a very nice life um, and to experience a lot of different things. I try to listen as much as possible uh, instead of just talk all the time. Uh, I find that if you listen to people, one of the first writing experiments I was ever given was to go out and listen to people. And I think that's very important. Sometimes it's not about my verse when you're a writer. Sometimes it's about your verse or your verse uh, and what makes your verse special. So if you listen to other people, um, the way I think I was fortunate to be able to listen to Solomon's memoir, listen to the words on his page, you know, that's what made this film and this script so good. It wasn't, it wasn't me. I, I, I think I worked hard. I think I did good things. But it's special because Solomon was special. And your story is special. Your story is special. Your story is special. So for me as a writer, it's more about trying to find the special that's out there than just sit with me and go, oh, I, I've got something to say. A lot of writers do it and do it really, really well. Nothing against that. But for me, where I am right now, I, I like to find the special that's out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mike. Went down to the river Jordan. And that servant that don't obey his Lord shall be beaten with many stripes. That's scripture. The condition of your laborers, it's all wrong. They're my property. You say that with pride. I say it as fact. Drink! Man does how he pleases with his property. <laughs> you come here. I said come here! Days ago I was with my family in my home. Now you tell me all is lost. If you want to survive, do and say as little as possible. My soul arising. But I don't want to survive. For the year when I want to live.